construction department and financing has so many numerous parts and pieces to it. So the only thing that you really need to understand or the only thing that you really need to know is to let me structure the loan for you. It'll make your life easier. Two phases. You can do ABC Construction is putting up a 47 unit development in Northfield, okay? And the builder doesn't want to use the bank's money. He wants to use the borrower's money to be able to finance the house being built. That's one way to use a construction to find construction to permanent loan. So the builder building the, the, the property does not need to finance the project himself. He can finance the project with the, with the bank's money. It's easier to do that. Okay. Secondly, you find a piece of property and your customer wants to build a new home or he wants to tear down an existing home and he wants to build a new home. That's a construction department. The easiest way for you to handle that is you are going to have two contracts. The first contract is gonna be for the sale of the land. The second contract is gonna be a builder with the borrower. The loan is going to include the purchase price of the land plus the soft cost plus the cost to construct. So there's really three elements. The only part that you're going to have to worry about is that you write up a contract for the land. You have to give the borrower or the build the borrowers enough time to be able to select the contractor apply for their permits, get their engineering and get other, you know, engineering architecturals before you could close the loan. Okay. But it, you only need one contract. You're going to do a regular real estate contract. All it's going to be for is land. Okay. You don't okay. have to worry about that. Now, um, there is several ways for you to obtain listings for vacant property. And you can offer the seller of the land the ability to let you list the property and have the buyer or the builder pay the commission. This way, if you do it and you combine the price of the land plus the cost to construct, you will earn a commission based on the entire amount rather than just earning a commission on the land portion. That's something that you and I can go over in detail and I can teach you how to do it. It's okay. not that hard. So if you see a piece of property and it's a for sale by owner, and it's owned by Mr. Jones. And you say, hey, Mr. Jones, um, you know, if I can, if you'll allow me to do a joint venture with a builder and put up my sign along with the builder's sign, hi, then I'm going to be able to show you how you don't have to pay the commission on the property, on the sale of the property. You will do several things. You will earn more, you're, you'll he'll probably get closer to his asking price. He's not going to have to pay the commission on the property and you're going to be paid by the, by the builder and for the entire amount. So um, I've got several people that are doing that. So if, if the land is a hundred thousand dollars and the cost to construct is $300,000, Instead of you earning your commission on $100,000, you can earn it on $400,000. And I can get into that with you. Yeah. Um, 
We have a color brochure that I am going to be sending to everybody that is a construction to permanent brochure. It's only eight pages. So if you have somebody that's interested in purchasing the property or interested in building, you can always email it out to them. Or if you've got a lot of people who you know want to tear down their property, you can email that out to them. Okay. Now there's two things. Go ahead. Do you have a question? No. Stop. Stop me if you got a question because I'll forget later. Trust me. <laughs> um, if somebody's going to be tearing down a house and they're going to be removing the existing foundation, it's a construction loan. If somebody is going to be tear not tearing down the house and leaving two sections of the existing foundation, it is a renovation loan. So today we're just going to be focusing on the construction to perm rather than the reno. So I just want to go over a few things. Um, all new construction um, requires a 5% contingency reserve. And you're going to say, Winnie, what is, what's, what's contingency reserve? In the event that the builder or the borrower has cost overruns, we automatically build in 5% of the cost to construct into the project so that they don't have to go back to the bank after they've closed and ask the bank for more money. And it's not unusual. Oh, by the way, I wanted to add another window over here. Oh, by the way, I wanted to add another closet. Oh, by the way, I want to put in an elevator. Um, those are all done by change orders, but we're going to get, we'll get into the, the crux of it in a little bit. So construction, construction of perm is very simple. It's three basic parts, the land, the soft cost, and the construction part. Soft costs are engineering, architecturals, permits, and any other thing that is not of material value, like um, lumber is not a soft cost. Anything that's used to build the house is not a soft cost. So if they need an, if they need an engineer to be able to decide how much, um, what kind of foundation that they're gonna put in, that's part of the soft cost. Um, architecturals, they have to know, obviously know what they're going to build. So they would need an architect to come in and say, okay, this is what I wanna put. This is the dwelling that I wanna put on the property. Um, engineering, you're gonna need an engineer to come out and do what's known as soil borings. Now we're in an area where it is not unusual for the sand or the, or the, or the, the, the soil on the property to be too soft to be able to put in a regular foundation. So what they'll do is they'll say, well, the land is too soft. We may need to put in what's known as helical piles. If the house is in an area where you're gonna be building because it's in a flood zone. Do you do a lot of properties in a flood zone? No, just regular kind of like inland. Tell me where you built, where you, where you, like your area is. Hi, where's your oh, area? Well, I'm new, so I haven't actually sold or anything yet. Um, okay. But I am, we are, we're, I'm down here. I'm at the shore, so. Okay, all right, so. I'm often, what office do you work at? Uh, Keller Williams. No, 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 I know that. I work for Keller Williams too, but what office do you work at? In Northfield, Little Leg? North, yeah, Northfield. Okay. So anything, they're in, they're in order, so just grab one. Um, so anything that you're going to find that's on the water is probably going to need soil borings. Okay. So now that we've gone over the soft cost, then it becomes the construction contract. Now the builder is going to be, has to be chosen, obviously. The builder also has to be vetted. Um, we wanna make sure 
why don't you sit over there so I could see, I could like feel like I'm talking to somebody instead of talking to myself. Um, the builder has to be chosen and he has to be vetted. Now by vetted, I mean, he has to meet our criteria to make sure that he's gonna be able to take that project from start to finish. Because if he doesn't take it from start to finish, then we're gonna to have to intercede on his part or in, on his behalf and have another builder come in and finish the project. Because we can't just leave the borrowers in a lurch because they're making mortgage payments. Um, so in vetting a builder, what they're gonna need is they're gonna need somebody who has a minimum of three years experience in the industry. They're gonna need somebody who's built at least three homes. You don't have to write this down because it'll be in all the notes that you get. They have to have three homes under their belt in the last three years. And they have to have $10 million worth of general liability insurance a um, million dollars worth of general liability insurance. And then they have to be of the general liability, I'm sorry, general contractor's license. Now the difference is if, he, if they're a home improvement contractor, they can't put in a foundation. So since they can't put in a foundation, they can't build a house. And we're gonna know that because we're gonna check their license. Only general contractors can put in foundations. Um, and obviously we build the house from the ground up. So we, they have to have a general, general uh, contractor's license in order to be able to complete the project or even to begin the project. So vetting the builder is a very essential part in what we do. And I, when the borrower selects who they're gonna use for the builder, I'm gonna send them a package. The package is gonna be, okay, like give me a resume of all the houses that you built over the past three years. Give me the names and the addresses of the customers that we work with. Give me a copy of your general liability insurance. Give me a copy of your builder's license. And then we will do our due diligence to make sure that the builder is going to be appropriately you know, chosen for the project that he's going to be building. Now, if the builder only builds little houses that are a thousand square feet, and he's trying to build a house that's 5,000 5, square feet, we're going to question, does he have the ability to do that? Not that, that? not that things don't change, or he doesn't have the ability, but we're going to question it, obviously. We're here to protect the borrower. The borrower is the one that's putting out the money. The borrower is the one that wants to build the house and he's got to have a finished product and he's got to do it in a timely fashion. When you do a construction to permanent loan, you could have a choice of either having a nine month construction loan or a 12 month construction loan, depending on the size of the dwelling that you're putting on the property. The other thing that I'd like everybody to consider or to keep in mind is that I'm not going to close the construction loan too early because I want to give the builder enough time to be able to build the project in its entirety. So let's say that he's going to start he's going to start the process with me in January of 2022. And he needs three months to be able to get his permits, his architecturals, his engineering, choose his builder, have the builder vetted, get approved for the mortgage. Chances are, I'm not going to close that loan until they're entirely ready to be able to start construction. Because once I close the loan, that's when the clock starts ticking and that's when the nine and the, or the 12 months come into play. So it's very, it's very um, necessary that I know what's happening all along. There again, I'm going to say this to you, there are so many moving parts. The borrower has to obtain general liability, I'm sorry, not general, builder's risk insurance. Now builder's risk insurance, people say to me all the time, well, my builder has got um, insurance. Why do I need insurance? Well, your builder is covered, but what happens if 
there's damage to the property, there's damage to the dwelling when the builder is not on site. Or there, there's a, a, another superstorm standing. The builder can't be responsible for that. So they will, you, the borrower will need builder's risk insurance normally for a period of one year. And if they don't use all the, of the builder's risk insurance, it can be converted into their regular homeowner's insurance policy. Unlike a renovation loan, during the, during the construction, the builder, um, the, I'm sorry, the borrower is going to be making interest only payments during the construction. Let me give you a perfect example. He buys the piece of property for $100,000. He puts down 20%. He's borrowing $80,000. So initially, right off the bat, he's going to be paying interest only on the $80,000. As each draw or each phase of the construction gets completed, the interest only is going to be added to his next payment. So if the builder is going to require five draws, or five payments because he's building a 100,000, or I'm sorry, a 3,000 square foot house, and he needs five draws, which means, and I'll get into that, which means that he needs, he's gonna need money five times. As, they, as the money is released, the interest is going to be recalculated so that they're paying interest only on the, on the construction. Now, here's what happens. And let's use $100,000 as a perfect example. The land's $100,000. The soft cost and the engineering are another $50,000. The hard cost, the cost of the actual construction is another $250,000. That's a $400,000 loan. There is four ways to finance this loan. One is FHA, where they'll only need three and a half percent down to be able to purchase the house. The other one is VA, where the Veterans Administration is going to allow, the, allow the, the borrower to put no money down and build the house. However, the, the contractor has got to be VA approved, or he's got to be sanctioned by the, by the Veterans Administration to complete the house. The other one is conventional, where he can put as little as two and a half, I'm sorry, 3% down. Or if he doesn't want to pay mortgage insurance, he can put 20% down. If he wants to keep money or he wants to have a lesser mortgage and he needs and he says, oh, I'm going to front the front the construction and I'm going to be putting down $100,000, but we're only, we only need $80,000 to pay off the land. We're going to ask him to give us the money so that we make sure that we pay out, we pay the builder for work in place. The builder only gets paid when he does the work in place. So the builder comes to us and says, I've completed X, Y, and Z. We send a contractor out there, or I'm sorry, an inspector out there. They inspect the work and, the, and then they'll cut them a check for the, for the work that they've already done. Um, the work, the draws cannot exceed either 10% of the entire construction or $50,000, whichever is less. So each time the builder needs money, he's going to be contacting us. We're going to be sending somebody out to look and see if we can get, the, if they've done the work they're actually going, they actually said they were going to do. We're going to take pictures of it. We're going to do what's known as a title bring down because we wanna make sure that there's no 
subcontractors that are working on the project that are going to put a, what's known as a mechanics lien on the property. Mechanics lien can be the builder owes the subcontractor who happens to be a plumber $25,000 and he hasn't paid the plumber. What happens is the plumber goes to the, goes to the township and puts a lien on the property, everything stops. So it keeps the contractor always has to pay his subcontractors. And we wanna make sure that everybody gets paid because nobody likes to work for free. And therefore we can give the, that draw to the builder. After the house is completed, the loan turns into a permanent loan. So we're done. The house is completed. The last draw is given to the bank. He gets a certificate of occupancy. And once he gets the certificate of occupancy, the loan turns into a permanent financing loan. Um, so when I say that there's ex extreme amount of moving parts, I stay in this during the entire process. You're going to be getting paid as soon as the construction loan closes. So if, it, if the construction loan closes in three months, you're gonna be getting, getting your commission on it right up front. Um, you don't have to worry about staying in the deal until the house gets completed like you would an end loan. Um, we wanna make sure that the builder has done all of his work. So there is what's known as a 20% hold back until the builder gets a certificate of occupancy. Now, nobody's gonna be able to close without a certificate of occupancy. So that's where we're gonna hold some of the money back until we make sure that the borrowers are happy and everybody else is happy. Um, there's a lot of other situations where, and I just wanna, um, I just wanna bring a few things I, I wanna enlighten you on a few things. The eligible properties can only be a one unit site built home, which means they can only, they can't build a duplex for construction to permanent financing. They can't build manufactured housing. Manufactured housing is a mobile home, cannot be considered a construction to perm. They do not allow two to four units on the property. If the lot exceeds 20 acres, that's also a commercial loan. So they're not gonna be able to do that as well. And they don't offer financing for log homes. Um, there are no, if somebody needs to um, build the house, they don't allow for non-occupant co-borrowers. Mom and dad wanna co-sign the loan for you can't on a construction loan. So they cannot have an occupant that is not living, going to be living in the dwelling, cannot be on the mortgage. Um, they, are, they are qualified on the fully amortized rate or the fully full interest rate um, of what it's going to be after the loan closes. Now, during the construction, Whatever the interest rate is on the 30 year fixed during the construction, they add three quarters of a percent. So let's say today's interest rate is 4%. During the construction phase only, their interest that they're going to be paying in interest only payments is going to be four and a half percent. But at, at they're locked in, yes, after they're locked in after four. Um, escrows are going to be collected at time of closing. Escrows meaning tax escrows, homeowners insurance escrows, and if they need flood, they're going to have to pay flood escrows as well. Um, let's see. There cannot be, um, these are considered to be arms length transactions, which means 
um, the builder cannot be related to the borrower, the builder cannot be the borrower, and the builder cannot do, uh, I'm sorry, the borrower cannot provide self-help. So if the borrower is a plumber, he cannot do his own plumbing. It, it, it's, it's not allowed because they feel that it, it's not going to be done in a timely fashion and they're, they're on a, you know, on the constraints of either a nine or a 12 month construction. So they don't allow self-help on these projects. So if somebody says to me, I, will, I, I want to put in my own air conditioning and heating, it's not going to be allowed. The contractor has got to hire a subcontractor that is going to be, um, that he's used before. If he happens to hire a company and this guy works for the company, that's another whole story that um, we, were, we could other talk about. Um, we cannot, you're not gonna do, you cannot do alternative credit history on these properties. I know that we can do FHA and FHA will usually allow, because you're putting down three and a half percent, they will allow us to get loans approved with alternative credit. Alternative credit is something that is not on the credit report, such as um, we can use somebody's electric bill, we can use somebody's car insurance, we can use their cell phone bill as alternative credit. When you're building a home, new construction, it has to be credit that's on the credit report only. FHA, if they are delinquent on student loans, that's a no-no because federal government will not insure the loan. So we got to make sure that they're credit worthy in every sense. Um, any payments that are any payments that are made by the borrower directly to the builder, or purchases purchase of materials outside the building contract will not be considered in the total acquisition of the loan. So if the builder starts taking money up front from from the um, the borrower, I can't use that as a calculation to reimburse him to get that money back. Um, we have to do, we wanna make sure that the borrower has, is fully aware that if he gives the builder money up front, we can't be responsible for the fact if the, if the builder runs off with the money, which has happened in numerous situations. So the builder does not, if he gives them the money up front, we're not going to calculate it into his into the cost to construct because that's um, we have no control over it. As I said to you, if the lot was if the lot was acquired with um, 120 days of the loan application, I'm going to need documentation that they purchased the land in the form of either. Um, the mortgage note or the closing statement. Um, let's see. They can have they can have mortgage insurance on these loans, so we can they can put for conventional they can put down as little as five percent, or in some cases three percent on a conventional. Um, but they do have to have mortgage insurance, and it has to be included into the financing. On title insurance, which is gonna be required before we close, the long form title insurance must be obtained on all construction loans. Now, long-term title insurance means that they have to do a 60 year search. If they bought the property of a year ago and they want to you know, use that, use the same title policy, it can't be used. We have to have a whole new 60 year search to be able to do that. Um, when the loan converts, um, they're going to get an actual mortgage. So they'll start making their regular mortgage payments after they obtain the certificate of occupancy and after they move into the home. They have to move into the home 60 days after the construction 
And if they have a house that they need to sell and they have not sold it, it's got to be considered into the debt to income ratio on the mortgage. So I have a glossary of terms that I'm going to send out to everybody so that you you understand some of the things that I was speaking of, you know, such as interest reserves, such as, you know, con you know, construction, soft cost, uh, hard cost, and what exactly all of those mean. The process is not difficult. It is monitored. Um, it moves very slowly. It moves very, I'm sorry, it moves very quickly if I have all of the moving parts. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, engineering, architecturals, permitting. That could take a long time. And after Superstorm Sandy and after COVID, you know, some of the, some of the departments um, are still not working um, or they're taking six or eight months to get even permits for something. So we have to be accountable to the borrower and let them know what's happening all along the way. If you have a construction loan, I, can, I clearly would love to sit with your people and say, let me go over everything with you. I can make detailed suggestions as to what they can do or what they can't do. And this way, at least we know that the loan is set up correctly. Again, I'm gonna be sending you out um, the colored brochure that you can forward to your, to your customers if you have somebody that you know wants to build, build a home. Um, certainly they can ask as many questions as they want prior to doing something. I don't make recommendations on builders because I feel that they should be comfortable with the builder that they're using. I, I tell them to interview two or three builders get two or three estimates, make sure that they're comfortable with the insurance companies they use. They have the, they have the right to um, pick, any, uh, pick the title company that they'd like to use. But the one thing that I urge is if they're doing a construction loan, that they certainly have an attorney. If they don't have an attorney, I would not be very comfortable with closing a loan without an attorney. Um, you know, they can have a mother, brother, sister that's an attorney, but at least they have an attorney in case something happens. Uh, we can't be responsible for anything that the builder does outside the parameters of our construction loan. So with that being said, um, does anybody have any questions? Ratio. I don't know how to do this. Do you know how to answer his question? He's got his hand up, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, let me see. Can you go upstairs and get Laura? <laughs> Just hang in, a, hang in there a second. Chat, is that it? Nope. Hold on. Joe, yeah, if you have a question, unmute. Unmute, okay, it says mute. Okay, unmute. I'm unmuting. Um, Camille, you're on. fine. I was saying that if Horatio has a question, he can unmute. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hit it by accident. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. You don't have a question? No. Okay. Um, I'm available at any time. If you guys have any questions, Donna. Can you just uh, put your email in the chat so that way I can um, copy it from there? Here you go. Okay. Type your message here. Can you tell I'm not Zoom friendly? <laughs> <laughs> That happens sometimes. Well, I'm getting used to this. Yeah, it's not bad once you get used to it. Okay, it didn't work. C A M. Why is it not working? 
It's Camille Murata at homeridge.com, you said? Yeah. I'm trying to get it. Um, where? Okay. Uh, Jason was kind enough to give me the, to let you see this. This is. Oh, there we go. Home guys, bridge. Okay. No, Perfect. I, I'm not backwards, am I? <laughs> no, I, I got it. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. My cell phone number is 732-539-9300. I'm available Saturday, Sunday evenings. Doesn't make any difference. Okay. I'm here for you. Um, Thank you. I've been doing construction and renovation loans for 35 years. There's not going to be a question that you're going to be able to ask me that I can't answer. I want to make it as easy as possible for you. I don't only do construction to perm. I do everything else. Um, I do want to tell you that Homebridge has a great program out right now. If somebody wants to get pre-approved for a mortgage um, with interest rates kind of question, you know, questionable, one day they're good, one day they're bad, we will do a loan approval for them so that they have better negotiating power um, and we will lock the loan in for 120 days. And once they close, we'll send them a $300 gift card. It's just, we're trying to give them the advantage of being able to become a homeowner. So if Don, especially for you, if you've got questions, I have 35 years of real estate experience. I'm licensed with Keller Williams here. Okay. And out of the Little Lake Harbor office, but I'm always there for questions. If you can't get Tom and he, he's got a specific real estate question, or you can't get Roe, you're more than welcome to call me because I probably saw it, did it, had it, whatever. <laughs> Great, um, that's perfect. Thank you, I appreciate that. I thank you all for being here today and I will be sending out um, all the information to everybody at home at uh, Keller Williams. And everybody have a wonderful summer.